Welcome to the Molar Ratio Podcast. This podcast covers sections 9.1 in your textbook, and it's on pages 280 to 287. In this podcast, we are going to learn how to convert moles of one substance into moles of another substance. Um, so the first thing we need to know is going back to balanced chemical equations. And if you're at all confused about balanced chemical equations, or any of this sounds confusing, um, I highly recommend you go back to Unit 5, the Chemical Reactions Unit, and uh, go over some of the stuff from that unit to brush up. Some of the stuff in this podcast is also going to rely on dimensional analysis. So if you're having any issues with the mathematics that I'm doing and the way I'm setting up the problems, I recommend that you go back to Unit 6 and look through some of the dimensional analysis notes that you have and just refresh your memory on those. Okay, so first off is that the coefficients in a chemical equation give the relative numbers of molecules. For example, two molecules of H2 produces two molecules of H2O, and it requires one molecule of O2. So if I double the amount of H2 to 4, that means I would need to double the amount of O2, which would also double the amount of water. The coefficients can represent either molecules or moles. So I was just talking about them referring to molecules, but these coefficients can also represent moles. One thing that's very important is that these coefficients never, ever represent um, grams. So pay attention to that. They never represent grams. Okay, so the coefficients in a chemical equation actually can give us a mathematical relationship. Uh, so we can use the molar ratios to convert from moles of one substance to moles of another substance. So this equation I have here, this 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2O, I have a relationship between H2 and O2. Two moles of H2 equals one mole of O2. And I can write that out as a ratio. Two moles of H2 for every one mole of O2. And I can write that ratio inversely as well. One mole of O2 every two moles of H2. So here's our mathematical relationship. And we're going to use these ratios, these relationships between moles of one substance and moles of another substance, to convert from moles of whatever substance is on the bottom to the new substance. So here is an example problem. If we formed 5.8 moles of water, so we're making 5.8 moles of water here, how much hydrogen gas and how much oxygen gas did this require? Well, we are going to set up a dimensional analysis problem starting with 5.8 moles of H2O. And we're just going to set up one of those uh, T tables. And on the bottom we're going to have moles of H2O. Now I need a number that goes here. That number is going to be the coefficient for H2O in the balanced equation, so two moles of H2O. What am I trying to convert to? Well it says hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So let's do hydrogen first. So moles of H2 is going to be our value on the top, our units on the top. And we're just going to take again the number right from the balanced equation, which is also a 2. 2 over 2, that's 1. Multiplying that by 5.8, that means we need 5.8 moles of H2 for this reaction to take place. And we need to do this for water as well. So again, I'm going to start out with 5.8 moles of H2O. And make a T-chart. And moles of H2O, again, is going to be on the bottom, just like in the... Uh, formula above us, the equation above us. I'm going to put 2 there, but instead on the top I'm going to put 1 mole of O2. So 5.8 divided by 2, 2.9 moles of O2 is required for this reaction. Okay, so notice my moles of o H2O, those units cancel out completely, and we're left with the units of whatever is on top, the last one on top, as our units for our answer. Perfect. 
we figured out how many moles of hydrogen gas and how many moles of oxygen gas that requires. All right, so here's another practice problem. How many moles of O2 are required to react with four moles of H2? So we know we've got four moles of H2. Uh, and it also says how much o H2O does this form? Well, let's concentrate, since there's two questions here, basically. Moles of O2, and we want moles of H2O as well. We're going to focus on moles of O2 first. So we're going to use our four moles of H2, set up a little T chart here, and we're trying to find moles of O2. So we're going to use the moles of O2 from the balanced equation, which is 1, and we're going to use the moles of H2 from the balanced equation, which is 2. And H2 cancels each other out. So we've got 4 times 1 divided by 2. We need 2 moles of O2 for this reaction to occur. And we also want to figure out how many moles of H2O this forms. So we're going to start out the same way. 4 moles of H2. And we are going to convert 2 moles of H2O. And the coefficient from that is 2. And on the bottom, we need moles of H2 to cancel out. And the coefficient for that is 2. So moles of H2 and moles of H2 cancel out. We've got 4 times 2, which is 8. And we divide that by 2, 4. So 4 moles of H2O should form when this reaction is taking place. OK, so that's pretty much it for the mole to mole conversion portion uh, of the podcast here. So if you have any questions, please write down your questions and bring those to class, and we will see you in class.